Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, the latest on Michael Bennett's police encounter in Las Vegas, plus reaction to NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell's comments on Colin Kaepernick. And Skip and Shannon make their Super Bowl predictions. Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. The latest on Michael Bennett. TMZ obtained footage of a Las Vegas police officer detaining the Seahawks defensive end after last month's Mayweather-McGregor fight. Bennett wrote on Twitter that he was physically harassed by police and had a gun pointed at his head. The Las Vegas police held a press conference yesterday and said officers viewed Bennett as suspicious, and that's why he was handcuffed. He added Bennett was released after 10 minutes. Let's take a listen to Bennett and the police spokesman yesterday. I can tell you as I stand here today, I see no evidence of that. Um, that ra- I see no evidence that race played any role in this incident. Due to Bennett's actions and the information the officers had at the time, they believed Bennett may have been involved in the shooting, and they gave chase. Bennett was placed into handcuffs and detained while officers determined whether or not he was involved in the original incident. It's also important for me to note to you, uh, both of the officers involved in this incident in question are of Hispanic origin. Obviously, I would hate to be up here through these circumstances and happen to be up here talking about it. Um, it's a traumatic experience for me, uh, my family, and it sucks that the country that we live in now, sometimes you get profiled for the color of your skin, and um, it's a tough situation for me. I try to tell my daughters every single day that 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 they matter and that, you know, Shannon, after hearing all of that, has your view changed at all in the situation? Absolutely not. What did you expect the police to say? This is what we know. We've seen police unions and the police departments have an officer be involved in something that we deem that's inappropriate or suspicious, and they will back them to the very end. That's what they do, Skip. They have each other's back. Uh, I'm also... But I am a little... Maybe I'm not surprised. You notice, know Skip, he had a body camera, but it wasn't turned on. Good point. This was cell phone video. Mm-hmm. The undersheriff also said mm-hmm. he knew nothing about this until it was posted on social media. So you mean to tell me the two officers involved would not want to write a report that says we detained a black male, handcuffed him, set him into the back of the police car mm-hmm. for a period of time? Yep. So guess what, Skip? If Michael Bennett doesn't say that, you don't hear this. Mm. Guess what, Skip? How many Michael Bennett's are there in the United States of America? So this goes on more than we ever thought. Also, (laughs) Skip, Skip, but this is what's going to get you, Skip. I got to read, I got to read, I got to read this, Skip. I got to. Now, this is a statement from Roger Goodell. Michael Bennett represents the best of of the NFL. He's a leader on his team and in his community. Kaepernick doesn't represent the best of the NFL. He's not, he wasn't a leader on his team or in his community. But Skip, this is the way you were like, whoa. He says, Michael has been raising deserved serious attention from all our leaders in every community. <laughs> Skip, mm. Colin Kaepernick been doing this since last year. Mm-hmm. He didn't even mention anything. Skip, I wonder if you know, you know the joint. Do they know Michael Benning is sitting during the national anthem? And they didn't say anything about his gesture. Remember I told you yesterday that I've been saying it for the longest time. If you like the person, you'll like the cause they represent. Mm-hmm. If you do not, I don't care how noble the cause is, mm. you're out. This is what he said about Colin Kaepernick. Last year, player, the NFL released a statement. Mm-hmm. Players are encouraged but not required to stand during the national anthem. Michael Bennett has been sitting the entire preseason mm-hmm. talking about these very issues that Colin Kaepernick took a knee for and was talking about. But everybody was out on cap because you see, Skip, he was a backup. And see, as a backup, he's trying to get illicit sympathy. He's trying to make it a personal agenda. He's trying to make it about him. It's not about his community. 
it's not about the guy. It's not about the guy that's not named Michael Bennett mm -hmm. that has a platform that can come out and issue a statement and hire a civil rights attorney. Mm -hmm. What about the guy in Cleveland? See, we're always willing to give the police the benefit of the doubt. Even after the DOJ came back with what they found in Ferguson, what they found in Baltimore, what they found in Chicago, still, that wasn't a, That's just isolated, even though we know, and it said it was systemic. Hmm. You see, Skip, Cap and Michael Bennett are basically talking about the same thing, but so many people were out on Cap that they didn't care about the cause. This is the same cause. Skip, you hear this. I've heard people say, now that this has happened to Michael Bennett, we got to take it serious. Really? So it took you to see Michael Bennett, although we've seen all the videos of black unarmed suspects running away, mm -hmm. getting shot in the back. The jury gets hung. Mm -hmm. We see the guy pull up on the scene. Tamir Rice is 12 years old, mm -hmm. and within two seconds, he's gunned down. But he looked like he was like 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. So it, this is what it took. But Skip, if you won't believe what the video camera tells you, what happens when there's no video camera and it's one word against the officer's word? Who do you think they're going to believe? <sighs> this is the okay. issue that's been trying to be raised for the very, very long time. Okay, so I have a question. Yes, you. Does it matter to you at all that both of the officers in question here were Hispanic? No, and I, I wrote that down. Mm -hmm. I said he threw Hispanic in there to let everybody know they're also minorities. So you can't possibly have racial profiling if the profiler is of Hispanic descent, which is a minority, and the profilee is an African-American. So there's no possible way. But you notice what I said, Skip. I said it's the police and the killing of unarmed. I didn't say one specific. I didn't say it was black. I didn't say white. I said police because the police is a body. It's just not, oh, only African Americans are police or only uh, 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 whites are police or only Asian or Hispanic. Although every time I've brought it up on the show, I've said white police killing unarmed black. But just for the record. Yeah. So just... But so, so this doesn't change your view of this incident? No, whatsoever. no, okay. it does not. Because right. here, let me ask you a question, Skip. He said, okay, what was the, what was the, what was the, how did the profile go out? So what was it, he looked suspicious. What the information they had? Okay, what information you had? You want me to break it down, what I've read? Yeah. Okay, because I'm, I'm curious about this, what you, how both of you would see this. So this is, I'm not picking sides here. I'm just giving you the Las Vegas police version of these events. And again, we've had Michael Bennett on the show, and mm -hmm. I have nothing but high regard for him and his credibility here. But this is their version of this event. Mm -hmm. They say that they got a call around 1.30 in the morning after the McGregor Mayweather fight. Correct that there was an active shooter in a nightclub in what's called the Cromwell Hotel and Casino, which is part of Caesar's Palace. Correct. And Michael confirmed certainly in what he posted yesterday that there was sort of panic and chaos and people are running from what they think are shots fired. Okay. But the police say that, that they sent a team of police to the Cromwell and that they had successfully cleared the entire casino and then they were going to enter as a unit. This is, again, I'm not, I'm not defending. I'm just giving their version of it. They're okay. going to enter the casino as a unit and proceed into the nightclub looking for an active shooter. And in this case, they say as they go through the doors into the casino, which has been emptied, according to the police, one of the officers you could hear on, on the other body camera mm -hmm. says, I think it's the officer in question here whose body camera mm -hmm. for some reason was not turned on, mm. says there he is because they saw Michael Bennett crouching behind a gaming machine in what they say was a virtually empty casino. Okay. And the second that they say they see him, he sees them and gets up and flees out the south doors. Mm -hmm. And the two officers ahead decide to give chase because they don't know. They, th that seems suspicious to them that he saw them and took off running. You said it went out at 1.30 a.m., an active shooter in a nightclub. Did they say that active shooter was black? I don't know. They ought to.
automatically they, assumed. Well, they they didn't. I mean, you don't know that, but but they just saw Michael. So, Bennett. Why, so, so why are you ch why are you chasing okay, the guy? Okay, so so because he took off running. But again, I could see where officers would think, gee, he took off running. So they go through the south doors, and not only does he keep running, according to them, he leaps over a wall and runs into traffic on whatever it was, Las Vegas Boulevard, Skip, whichever. That okay. should tell you. Here's a six foot four black man, 274 pounds, scared of the police. See how you, you. No, I got it. I got it. But I'm just saying, d can you see where a policeman would be somewhat suspicious of that? I could if that's how it happened, but that's their version of this but, event. But you, okay? see, but you see how they want us to give them the benefit of the doubt? when they never give a mm -hmm. black suspect, which he was not, but they never give a black the benefit of the doubt. Trust us, mm -hmm. but we don't trust you. Now, the call went out, it didn't say nothing about, it didn't say he was black, it didn't say he was white, it didn't say he was medium build, he was large build, he was short, it said well, nothing. I don't, I don't know that. I mean, maybe it did describe oh, the shooter. That's an know. active shooter. But they also found that there was no active shooter in the end, that it was just a fight upstairs in the nightclub that knocked over a couple of statues yeah. that that were loud enough that they thought it sounded like gunfire. Yes, but that's, Skip, that's what okay. I've been trying to say, is that police will tell you things, and they want you to believe them, that if you told them the exact same thing, they would never believe you. Mm -hmm. The mere fact that he was crouched down, well, if there's an active shooter, I mean, I'm going to be crouched down, and the first chance I get, I'm going to make a break for it. Okay, the I'm, not, I'm not overly defending the cops, but I could also see that if the guy crouching was white or Hispanic or whatever color he might be, that, that you would say, oh, wow, that looks suspicious. Maybe we should at least question him. And if he runs and then runs into traffic, you'd say, gee, maybe he knows something about what happened upstairs. Well, if he was, that, if he was the active shooter, I would think he would have a handgun. And if, he, if he's shooting, he ain't going to have no problem turning around firing on you. Don't know. Good. But, but that's not the okay. skip. We keep giving them the benefit of the doubt. You keep see, you see, okay. you're making the argument for that so I, I'm not, I'm just telling you their version of events here. I, I, and, I, it, and it's it's sort of a weird a weird I, occurrence here, how it, it it developed. And I don't know where Michael came from. He said he was walking back yeah. to his hotel after the fight. And I guess he was by himself because he, he wasn't with any friends or family because he was just alone, I guess. I know what they told us about Laquan McDonald mm -hmm. when the guy was shot 17 times in Chicago. Yep. I know what they said. Okay. I know what they said in Charleston. Oh, the guy was a threat as he's running away, gunned down five times mm -hmm. in his back. I know what they will say mm -hmm. because they will say what they need to say to protect themselves. Well, they also even said they home. have like 126 different views of, of security cameras yeah. that they're going to break down, so maybe we'll get to see more of yeah. this. But at some point. What Colin Kaepernick started taking a knee for last year, what Michael Bennett started taking a seat for, Mal uh, uh, Malcolm Jenkins and other guys have raised their fist for, mm -hmm. was this. Because you see, Skip, everybody is not Michael Bennett. Well, this uh, happened let's finish this. So, so then the, the first officer... Approach. He, he, he gets him down on the ground. Right. And then, by the admission of the spokesman and by the video that they actually released, he did put his gun to Michael Bennett's head, and Michael, at that point, I think he would know by then he was unarmed. Right. I, wouldn't you have frisked him? Yeah, you're gonna pat him down first. I think, yeah. I think, before you get him on the right. ground, I guess that's like protocol. Hey, think about it, Skip. Right? Michael Bennett, 6'4", 274. Look yep. at this officer. Okay. Michael Bennett went to the ground. He mm -hmm. would know, because he already know how this is gonna play out. Yep, and then Michael Bennett said that the officer said to him, you move and I'll blow your Mm -hmm. head off yeah and the, the spokesman pretty much he, he doesn't disagree with that uh well, we hear audio. Yeah, yeah yeah okay so so we got that and we got the tmz audio yeah. and then michael said he was detained for what felt like an eternity and now the spokesman is saying for 10 minutes in the back of the police cruiser at which points the the supervisor of the team came up and and apologized to him and 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 told the spokesman that Michael had no problem with anything that happened except for the fact that a gun was placed to his head. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's, that's the whole version I'm getting from one side and the other side. Okay. And then the great irony here is if I had to pick one NFL player other than Colin Kaepernick to be involved in this, the, the, for, for the sake of the Las Vegas police, yes. would, would Michael Bennett n not be the last guy that you would want to profile? Exactly. Because I told you there was an article that ran just 
about, about, about 48 hours ago on ESPN.com out of the undefeated. The headline, Michael Bennett is an activist disguised as a football player. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, you, you picked on the wrong guy at the wrong place at the wrong time. Maybe it was bad circumstances where, where everything just went wrong at the wrong time. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time as the police team broke in, you know, charged into the casino. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm just giving you the aversions of right. events. But then to your point, from that point, does he deserve to have a gun? place to his head, right. and if you move, I'm going to blow your uh, head off? He's already down. He's yeah. not resisting you. He's asking you, what did he do? Why are you doing this? Yep. And you're saying, don't move, blah, blah, blah. But Skip, mm -hmm. this is what happens on a daily basis to a guy not, or Got to it. a guy or a female not named Michael Bennett. Yep. And the first thing they say, well, why did you run? Why the hell you chase me? Mm -hmm. If you chase me, I'm going to run. Yep. Even if I didn't do anything wrong, because I already know how y'all do it. Mm-hmm. I already know what's going to happen. So can, let's just say for the sake of argument, the person that ran had nothing to do with the incident. You're going to go back and you're going to find out where he had four traffic tickets, he had a, a disorderly conduct, he did something in his past. That's why he was running. See, remember I said it yesterday, Skip. What did Michael Bennett do to make these police officers come mm -hmm. in contact with him? Because unless you can see this incident happening to you, it's very hard for you to have empathy and understand mm -hmm. what it's like. Yep. See, just, just for the record, I will bet you a whole lot of Hispanic people have been profiled similarly to this. Yeah, well, I will well, bet you. Yeah. And in certain cities in this country especially. Yeah, they get, they get profiled, and they get mm -hmm. picked up, and they get sent back to where, where they came from. Okay. So I, I'm just not arguing. for the that, record. Yeah, they're, they're, they're minorities. I've mm -hmm. yeah. got no problem with that. But the problem that I have is that the experience and I'm, you, I know you're not making excuses. You're trying to be fair, trying to wear both, mm -hmm. both sides of the argument. And I get it. But I just, what is it? Why is it that we go, oh, we'll bend over a barrel. We'll do mm -hmm. everything in our possible yep. power to make sure that we give the officers the benefit of the doubt, even if they don't deserve it. While mm -hmm. in the same breath, the man that was just doing absolutely nothing, well, he had to have done something to make these officers come in contact with him. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand that. That's the part that gets me. I don't know. Usually when a tragedy occurs, when, when an innocent man gets gunned down mm -hmm. for no reason, th there's usually some extenuating circumstance that, 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 could, that should have been avoidable, that just happened where everyone was at the wrong place at the wrong time, and then the police officer overreacts. Mm -hmm. And then he can say, I felt my life was right. in danger. In it, this case, not. But but here's the thing, though, Skip. The guy, normally, he has a body camera. You would think he would want to turn it why. on. you think he want to turn it on because, you know, they fear for that. Well, Skip, I feel for my life. Mm -hmm. Perceived. Real or perceived. Because the judge will mm -hmm. always instruct the jury. Yep. Real or perceived mm -hmm. might not even happen. But if you yep. thought it. Well, if you don't have to worry about having to prove whether your life was in danger. Thank no, you. you. don't need to have a... Mm -hmm. Joy, I, I'm trying to figure out how do you feel more for your life and you got a gun and a taser mm -hmm. and I got a pair of shorts and gym shoes on. Yeah. And I should not be in fear for my life? I got it. So the two suspicious areas from the police side of events is no body camera turned on and gun to head and I'll blow your head off if you move. Right. Don't get even... Those are indefensible to me. What, why not write a report, though, Skip? So, so you know what... So you, by not writing a report, you know what this tells me? What happened to Michael Bennett happens more than we ever thought. Because guess sure. what? Because, you know, they don't like doing paperwork. So if I were, if I were to every time I threw a black guy down mm -hmm. and he wasn't the person that I was looking for, or I threw a Hispanic or a minority to the ground, and they're not the person that I'm looking for, if I were to write a report, I'd be doing paperwork all day. Yep. The undersheriff said he knew nothing. Skip, this happened on August 26th. Mm -hmm. Michael Bennett let this out yesterday, September 6th. So that's what, 10 days, 13 mm -hmm. days? Yep. He knew nothing about this. The officer said nothing. Mm -hmm. Nobody said nothing. And guess what? If Michael Bennett doesn't say what he says, we know nothing. Mm -mm. So guess what? Everybody's not Michael Bennett. Everybody's not going to have that platform. Everybody's not going to be as respected or revered as Michael Bennett because the guy in Cleveland, the guy in Chicago, New York, is not going to get that benefit of the doubt. Oh, this is a different story. No mercy.
This is the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. Before the show moves along, I wanted to tell you today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible is a leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment on the internet. That means Audible content includes an unmatched selection of audiobooks, original audio shows, and more from the leading audiobook publishers, broadcasters, entertainers, magazine, and newspaper publishers. And good news, Undisputed listeners, you can get a free audiobook with a 30-day trial at www.audible.com slash undisputed. And unlike a streaming or rental service, with Audible, you own your books. Membership includes one free audiobook a month, as well as exclusive sales. Download and listen on any iOS device, Android, Amazon Fire tablet, or Windows phone. Now, my personal Audible recommendation, I Wear the Black Hat by Chuck Klosterman. I'm way into villains. It's an awesome book. I loved it. Listen to it on Audible. Remember, for your free audiobook with a 30-day trial, go to www.audible.com slash undisputed. That's www.audible.com slash undisputed for your free audiobook with a 30-day trial. No mercy. The NFL season starts tonight, and Colin Kaepernick is still a free agent. Roger Goodell was on First Things First this morning and was asked if Cap should be on an NFL roster. Let's take a listen. I want to see everyone get an opportunity, including Colin. And so, but those are decisions that are made by football people. As you know, teams and somebody we both respect, Tony Dungy and I were talking about this, when teams have a need and when teams feel like they can get better by a particular individual, whether they know the system or whether they're – they have more talent or whatever it may be, that's what they're going to do. And I'm still convinced that he'll get that opportunity when the right opportunity comes along. And that's what our league's all about, as you know. I'm not a football expert. Uh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I have a role as commissioner also. But for me, I watch the games and enjoy it, and I let the football people make those decisions. And the reality is there's a lot, 32 different decisions, right, and multiple decisions within an organization. So there's always a dispute. And the idea of who can play and who can't play, who's best for our system and not best for our system, are decisions that should be made by those 32 teams. Shannon, what's your reaction? (laughs) Bless the commissioner's heart. He's trying so hard to say everything publicly and put it all nice and PC. This is a talent based. Are you telling me Joe Webb is a better quarterback than Colin Kaepernick? Hmm. Mark Sanchez is going to have to learn a, uh, learn a new system. He's back up. Mark Sanchez is better than Colin Kaepernick. And then they ask him, they ask him a question. I wouldn't hear the question. He says, I'm not a football expert. The commissioner of the National Football League is not a football expert. But do you know football? Do you know who the good players are in your league? Because that sound is so that sound is so bad. If he knew, if he if he goes back and he plays this back, he's gonna be very disappointed because that came across as like, ooh, oh, I'm not a football expert. You've been the commissioner for over a decade. You've seen some of the some of the greatest statistical seasons. So I guess if they ask him about Peyton Manning, what do you think he'll say? Ask him about Tom Brady, what do you think he'll say? Ask him about Ray Lewis. How can you comment on them if you're not a football expert? Uh, so that's the way you dodge the question. I saw what you did, the commissioner. Mm. You try to do everything, PC, with a bit of talent-based league, and guys are going to make their situation. You and I both know that Colin Kaepernick has the talent to be on a roster. I'm not saying he's the greatest quarterback player. I'm not saying he's Tom Brady. But for you to tell me that he that Jacoby Brissett mm-hmm. is better than Colin Kaepernick, yep. Joe Webb, mm-hmm. they, they're signing guys that haven't thrown a pass in four or five years, that they're better than Colin Kaepernick? Man, they need to stop playing. Mm. They, they, this, this is so utterly ridiculous. D- just... Don't lie to my face. Lie behind my back. Don't lie to my face because now you're insulting my intelligence. Mm. You think I am so naive that I'm so Mm dim-witted that I can't possibly see through what you're trying to do and what you're actually saying. Just just say that. Mm. I'd just rather you say, you know, know, we're going to let the process play out. Just lie behind my back. Don't tell me that bull jive because the commissioner... For him to sit, and I'm glad he went on went on uh, uh, first things first. I'm glad he finally got on one of our shows. I guess that's one of the perks of being in New York. You can get the commission up fairly early. He comes in, but you know he comes sit on that seat right there, Skip. You mm. know, me, me and you, we coming with that that fire. In that. He will not sit in that seat. <laughs> and this commissioner insulted my intelligence, 
in the Tom Brady saga and now in the Ezekiel Elliott saga and for sure in what he just said on First Things First. He said what he had to say. Mm -hmm. He said what sounds good. Mm -hmm. He said what people want to hear. Yes. But he disqualified himself. I'm not a football expert, so don't blame me. Don't look at me. I don't even know what's really going on here, but mm -hmm. I'm still convinced, right. he concludes, that Colin Kaepernick will get an opportunity to play in this league. Convinced how? 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 Why? Where? One, one well, quarterback tore his ACL. The one had a bum back that says, I'm okay for the Cincinnati, but I don't know much more than that. So we've seen guys go down. We Andrew Luck still hadn't hadn't taken the snap in a meaningful play. So he's convinced because he's heard from five or six owners, oh, we're just waiting for an injury to happen, and then we're going to sign Colin, or we're we're going to see how our backups perform in practice, and then we might go with Colin. Baloney. Exactly. It's over. The the season started again. Joy's brought up the catastrophic injury. I guess it could happen. I'm going to bet against it. I think all signs point to Colin Kaepernick is out of football. And then I said, well, maybe this starts up again next year. And you said, how? Cause, cause, and, and I stopped myself and said, I don't know. Right. It's starting to feel like Colin Kaepernick has sacrificed his football career mm -hmm. to make the statement that resounded nationally. It's almost like you're in a class and the teacher asks a question and you raise your hand but she doesn't want to call on you. Okay, she's looking around and nobody else has the hand. Colin Kaepernick needs a job. He's got his hand raised. Uh, Joe Webb, you want to play quarterback? You were, you were wide receiver for the last couple of years. Uh, you need, oh, you hadn't played in quarterback in three years. We need you. They're looking all around. It's, oh, it's this and it's the system. You know, you'd have to change the system. Jacoby Brissett's going in there eight days. I guess if something were to happen to Scott Tolzien, Wonder what we're gonna do. What is it is it, it's it's so bad, Skip. It is it is so Look, bad. I, I know these two situations are extraordinarily different, but if you told me three or four years ago that both Robert Griffin the third and Colin Kaepernick would be without a job going into the twenty seventeen right. season, I would have laughed in your face. I think a lot of both people both of them? A lot of people would. Wow. Because think about it, Skip. One was rookie of the year, and yeah. then in the second, uh, the other in the second year, he went to a Super Bowl, threw for over 300 yards, was a, 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 a throw away from winning the Super Bowl. In his first year of starting right. midseason. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. he comes back yeah. his third year and gets back to the NFC Championship game. Wow. And two inches to the right, he's back in the Super Bowl yeah. again. Just put a little more air under it. You, we and, might be having a different conversation and, about that. And not all of a sudden. The Broncos wanted to trade for him last year after yeah. they come off the Super Bowl. He wouldn't take a $5 million haircut. Now, Skip, no, no oh, he can't play. He, 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 and John Elway just went back to Brock Osweiler. Right? Mm. Mm. Well, we realize that the commissioner is going to be PC. That's, uh, yeah. that's what he basically has to do. But well, we have actually heard from owners... So we know that they haven't signed him because of the protest. Yes. That's what yeah. Steve Vashati said out of his mouth. Uh -huh. We've heard from John Morrow. We've mm -hmm. heard from Jerry Jones. So we have. Not, we're not making this up. They've literally said this is why he's not signed. Yeah, it's not talent based. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, this, this is a talent based. Tony and I was talking behind the scenes. Okay. They've literally said it. <laughs> no mercy. The NFL is back tonight with the Patriots hosting the Chiefs. New England is heavily favored to repeat as Super Bowl champions. They're followed by the Packers, Raiders, and Steelers. All right. It's that time. Shannon, I'll start with you. Hot seat. <laughs> Give me your Super Bowl pick going into the season. At least for today. <laughs> Stop it, Skip. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with you. Mm. Oh, man, Skip. I, woo! Woo! I, I, with, Joy, I think he's changing on the fly. I'm starting. Nope. I'm starting I, I think it. You're second guessing started, what you wrote on. Nope. No, what your researcher wrote on your. I wrote uh, this. Okay. I wrote this guy. Yeah. This is my head right. <laughs> I'm taking the Seattle Seahawks in the NFC. You are? I am. What happened to the invincible New York football Giants? I like the Giants, but right at this current juncture, as we're sitting here today, I trust Russell Wilson a little more than I trust Eli Manning. Well, that's a... Mm. Duh. Uh, you look at what they've done. They've yeah. strengthened a strength. Mm -hmm. Sheldon Richardson. See, I love getting guys in contract year skills because mm -hmm. you know they're going to be highly motivated. Mm. And hit player him with Michael Bennett, Cliff Abel, Frank Clark, Richardson, Wagner. K.J. Wright, Boom, Legion of Boom back there. Mm. Ooh, Sherman, Earl Thomas, Cam. Eight guys on that defense of the 11 have been in the Pro Bowl. Mm. Ooh. And I, Russell, I trust Russell. And Russ, I trust. You're like, ooh. Him and Jimmy Graham got you that. trust with no T, right? 
Yeah. Okay. Rust and trust. Okay. Now you know we will we'll mm-hmm. need to that trust. Okay. I trust him. One hundred percent. I like the chemistry that they developed last year. He and mm-hmm. Jimmy Graham. Yep. Doug Baldwin is starting to make a name for himself. Not flashy, not Julio or Odell Beckham. All he does is, you know, get the ball in the end zone, come up with cl- clutch catches. But I thought you told me that all Eddie Lacy does is eat. Oh, right. But, but see, this is what's huh? gonna happen. See, oh, I oh, knew now you, you're on that bandwagon. I knew you was gonna say that. But see, early in the year, see, so don't get that cold and see how they got cold. In the, man, you know you can't be doing no exercise oh, yeah, that's, outside. Yeah. That's true. I didn't think of that. That's you, a good point. And you know he's in Seattle near yeah. Microsoft. They got the P90X. They got it on hard drive, so he just he can never break it. <laughs> He so, be, it, so he, he go, goes back home at night and does P90. Yeah, he stay motivated because you know every other week they give him another ten grand mm-hmm. to keep his weight down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so we good. Oh, oh, Eddie, Eddie gonna be good for at mm. least at least eight weeks. Mm. That's all we need. We need eight weeks from him. Okay. And now the reason both teams, I like the Giants and I like the Seahawks, skip, but both of them offensive line are terrible. To be honest, and the left tackle for uh, Seattle towards ACL. Yeah, George fanny has gone. And my thing is... Now what? But I'm looking at it like this. The Seahawks can take advantage of the Giants. The Giants can take advantage of the Seahawks offensive line. But when you look at the rest of the NFC, y'all ain't... Dallas ain't got no hell raises on the D-line. It's y'all, it's just... Oh, no, it's the Cowboys. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, you. Yeah. I'm talking about you. Yeah. I'm lumping you in there with you. Yeah. You, you. David Irving is a hell raiser. No, he, uh-huh. when he coming back? Uh-huh. He'll be back in four games. Oh, you sure? Yeah, I know, I mean, for that, sure. That means he's got to be clean for yeah. all... Because you know they will be up to 10 times a month. Yeah. <laughs> Taco's going to be making tacos for the rest of the defensive hey, line. Hey, he's going to raise some hey, hell. No, that, no, huh? nobody even Demarcus won't. Lawrence has raised hell in the past. He's there. You count on him to come back? Yeah. No, he's there. He's good. He's back good. good? Yeah. No yeah. problem? No problem. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. We got this. They not, you know, they didn't legalize that, that mm-hmm. thing up in Keep in talking. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go to the AFC side. I mean, I don't, I mean, I like Pittsburgh. I love their offense. Martavis Bryant coming back. Um, Skip, I just, I just don't trust the defense. And of all things being equal, I got to take the Patriots. But you, guess, wait, if you can't beat them, you finally joined them. But the guess, but guess what? In Super Bowl Fifty One, I mean well, Fifty Two. Yeah. They get their revenge. Oh. They get their revenge. Oh, so the Seahawks get revenge over get, the Patriots. Get it. Okay. Get that wait, get just, back. Just for the record, what happened to the Ravens? Because I knew for a while you were all, Man, you heard Joe you Flacco. Were driving that Ravens. You heard Joe there. Flacco. Yeah. Talk about his back's okay right now. Mm. Right now? Mm. You got 16 weeks to play. You talk about right now. Mm. But I keep it. You could have had Colin Kaepernick. Would that have changed your pick? Maybe. Maybe. I don't need to see. I mean, what are you gonna come in there and do now? Mm. They could have brought him in, let him get some, let him get some reps, they training camp reps, stuff like that. Yep. But the man skipped. The man says, I'll, I'll be, I'm okay to play against Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. That's only one game. Mm. So you're telling me that after Tom Brady has m- made you eat so much crow sitting in that seat week after week after week, you finally opened your eyes and came around to the truth that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback ever, and he's going to be at least as good as he was last year when arguably he had his best year of his career. This was about the Super Bowl picks. Mm -hmm. This is not about making no statement about how good or great Tom Brady is. I made my picks. I got the Seattle Seahawks over the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 52. Now, you can go. Now, you want to talk about Tom Brady and how great he is, you go right ahead. Okay, so you're just picking the Patriots by default because you just can't really make any case for anybody in the... AFC? Yeah, because everybody has in the AFC, the Ravens, I like their defense, but I don't trust their offense, especially with Joe Flacco's back. You look at the you look at the uh the Raiders, great offense, but their defense is terrible. But Von Miller's raving about Trevor Simeon like he's he's gonna be way better than he was last year. How can you not pick Denver if you're gonna pick somebody? I, I'm gonna pick Denver in something just that. Like, why you work? You make your selection. I'm this, just trying to figure Joy out. Joy came to me and said, Shannon, okay, you're up first. Yeah. Okay, give me your Super Bowl picks. Shannon, she said, Shannon. She didn't say skip. Mm. Skip, make your pick. Mm. I am sticking with exactly the same pick that I had one year ago today sitting right here in this seat.
I have New England over Dallas in the next Super Bowl, just as it should have been in last Super Bowl, except for two of the most bizarre and lucky field goals I have ever witnessed. A 56-yarder that barely sliced over the right side of the crossbar, Good and enough. then a 51-yarder at the buzzer that hooked completely left and then somehow straightened out. I've never seen that happen in my life. 40 walk years off. covering. A it was off. a walk-off lucky hand of God field goal that was just meant to be. And that saved Aaron Rodgers and it saved the Packers and it saved the NFC and it saved the Falcons from the Cowboys because the Falcons would have been coming to Jerry World for the NFC Championship game and my Cowboys would have won that game and lost to the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And that field goal Period. Did, End of story. And that field goal did something else to your Cowboys that start with an S. Mm -hmm. It sunk their mm -hmm. season. Yeah, it did. So obviously I feel much better about picking New England right now than I do Dallas because Dallas has the Ezekiel issue hanging over them, but I'll address that in just a moment. And yet the New England Patriots did something I have never in my long career seen before. They won the Super Bowl and then went out and won the offseason. Mm -hmm. They got better. They are the most prohibitive favorites I can ever remember in any Super Bowl pick I've ever made. And that is including the loss of Julian Edelman, who was Tom Brady's security blanket favorite receiver. And it just doesn't matter because right on top of that, they, they had Brandon Cooks and then the other day, Drake. Philip Dorsett. Mm -hmm. So you got two burners that Tom Brady hasn't had since Randy Moss in 07. Mm -hmm when Randy Moss was right mentally and really into it. That well, was, he played good in 08, too, even though Tom went down. It was okay. It was, it was fine. But, but again, that was their magical year together. Yeah. That was the record-breaking yes. year. So that's a long time. That's 10 years since you've had that kind of connection. Now you've got two possibilities. And by the way, Gronk now becomes just gravy. I don't know. How long will he stay healthy? Who knows? Probably not very long, yeah, right? But he's I, I believe he's healthy going into the season. Okay. So he's okay. Him, as right. long as he's healthy. So you, you've already proclaimed him. You did last year when we were in New York. You said this is greatest ever, right? No, I said he, he could. He could possess the potential. Okay. All right. See, why you keep trying to do that, Skip? To, I, I just want to get it right, but you said he could be yeah. the greatest ever. He could be even better than Shannon Sharp, who's a Hall of Famer. But he I, could be better than Tony Gonzalez, who's better than Shannon Sharp. Who's that's not true. <laughs> First of all, Skip, you have to stay healthy. I mean, he, he I mean, he keeps missing. Okay, I got games, it. But but he's games. like he's he's like gravy because Chris Hogan. I don't know. Right before your very eyes, I don't know if you're seeing this. He's emerging as a star receiver. I'm serious, Chris well, Hogan. It's gonna be and, it. It's and gonna by the way, Danny Amendola has as much trust from Tom Brady as Edelman does, so he can step into that role, right? Injury prone. Well, okay, but but still, you, it's just gravy. Right. And and who could have been the MVP of the Super Bowl? James White catching yes. balls out of the backfield. Yes. And Deion Lewis can just be electric. Yep. And I love Gillisley, and they they got him from Buffalo. Right. And he's going to give him a little more of a hammer, I think, than Legarrette Blunt did because he's just quicker and stronger and younger, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And and then I I look at Burkhead. Burkhead's pretty good, and he can catch it too. Yes. So so they got much better, all around better on offense, even without Julian Edelman. Mm -hmm. And then on defense. If you tell me you add Stephon Gilmore, best corner on the market, the free agent market, and wait a minute, you kept Malcolm Butler too? Because I thought they were going to lose Malcolm Butler, right? But Butler did struggle in the preseason, though, Skip. Okay, but but do you, th those two are really good. Yeah. Because I oh, think when be, the lights are on, I think Malcolm Butler is going to yes. be really good. Yes. So I can make a case that the defense – will be at least as good as it was I last they'll be year. Better with it David, could be better with David Harris. And David Harris. David Harris was a Jets mainstay of all those great Rex Ryan defenses yeah. for 10 years. Yes. And all of a sudden, he's a starting linebacker for the New England Patriots. Mm -hmm. So how can you not? You finally saw the light and came around. Yeah. But, right? I mean, the thing is for them, Skip, is that the way they play defense, they don't really try to get after your quarterback. They just put, push the pocket. They're going to keep everything because they don't want to give you lanes. That's why Coney Ely struggled. That's why Chris Long, he had a great time, won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But as a defensive lineman, as a defensive end especially, you want to be able to bend the corner. You want to be able to get on the edge and go get to the quarterback. But that's not what they do in their system. They want you to go right down the middle, and, hey, quarterbacks try to, hey, he tries to escape. You got the right arm free. If he tries to go here, you got, got the left arm. And that's hard. I mean, guys want to win, but guys also want to feel like they're making a contribution. Yep. Okay. Now on to my Dallas Cowboys. I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Ezekiel Elliott, I believe, will be eligible to play every game this season. I was out front of this, and I'm going to stand by it. 
and it was because of the great Kia Roberts, the director of investigations for Roger Goodell. She's going to be the Cowboys MVP, unsung MVP this year, because she had the guts to blow the whistle on Roger Goodell, and it's going to stand up in a real court of law that they have a legitimate case to be made that Roger Goodell attempted to railroad and frame Ezekiel without conclusive evidence for domestic violence. So I believe this will get hung up in federal court and keep him eligible all year long. I don't know what will happen next year, but this story is going to hang like a fog over the Cowboy season, and I believe it's going to hang like a fog over Super Bowl week because I think Zeke's going to be playing in this Super Bowl. Skip. And here's why Ezekiel is not going to win, because the NFL standard is almost like a okay. civil settlement. It says if it's more you, probable you, than not. Okay, you could be right about that long term, but short term, as in just this football season, I believe that Jerry Jones and company will be powerful enough with, with a team of superstar lawyers led by Jeff, Kessler. Uh, Jeffrey Kessler that they will hang this up in federal court. It's just now getting started. You know how long it takes. Yes. So I think he will remain eligible for this year. And fittingly, this story and this theme of getting framed and railroaded by Roger Goodell will drive the Cowboys just the way they, it drove the Patriots last year. Remember, the term that they kept going back to in the Tom Brady case, Skip, more probable than not. Is it more okay. probable? And that's, hey, that's all they need, Skip. Yeah, but if you can convince a federal judge that there was an actual conspiracy going on to keep Kia Roberts out of the final meeting with her conclusion of no suspension, then you, can, you the judge is going to open his eyes uh -uh. and ears to uh -uh. this. Uh -uh. Yeah. Unless, yep. un Skip, unless it's in a documentation yep. of the CBA that the investigator who investigates the case also has to be in on the meeting, what are we talking about? It's moot. Mm. Well, we'll see. We'll just see about that. I think Jerry Jones is going to defeat Roger Goodell ultimately, thanks to Kia Roberts. Way to go, Kia, for having the guts. She, she's incredible what she's done. People don't get how, how groundbreaking this is. She blew the whistle on her boss, and it's going to stand up. So the point is... My Cowboys on offense, you're, you're going to eat some big crow on this because nope. Dak Prescott's going to be even better than he was a, le a year ago when you said he was a flash in the pan, right? Am I putting words in your mouth? I didn't say he was a flash yeah, in the pan. Did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. So let's just get it on the record right now that he was a one-year wonder and that he will fall back to earth. That's what you have said repeatedly on this show. I want it on record because I'm saying he will be in the MVP conversation all the way home. All the way home. Why do you do this? I'm just telling you. Oh. I just want it. This is it. This is our moment of truth right here. Okay. You're... I'm putting myself out on the limb. All I've said, it was one year. Let's see what he does. Okay. As a well, I, I bought, I'm predicting what he's going to do because he's got two new toys in Ryan Switzer and Rico Gathers, who's right now on IR. But he will come back and become a red zone monster, a Gronk-like monster for the Cowboys mm -hmm. at 6'6", 285. Roger Goodell said, yep. I got six on it, Zeke. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Well, are you predicting he's going to serve it this year? They're not winning the Super Bowl. Okay. They're not going I, to the Super Bowl. All right, so I don't think Shannon has the Seahawks over the Patriots yep. and skips the Patriots and Cowboys with the Patriots winning. Correct. Patriots over Cowboys. Incorrect. No mercy. Hey, guys, it's Joy Taylor. Before the show moves along, I want to bring in a friend of the program to tell you about his exciting new project. I'm James Andrew Miller, and I want to introduce you to a new podcast called Origins as we relive indelible turning points that went down in cultural history and changed it arguably forever. We'll open Origins with a five episode cycle digging deep into Curb Your Enthusiasm. We'll hear from more than a dozen key players who retrace how Curb evolved from mere smash hit to a turning point in television. You can find the Origins chapter on Curb Your Enthusiasm when you search and subscribe to Origins with James Andrew Miller wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, back to the show. No mercy. Welcome back. We're joined now by the dynamic duo of Eric Mangini and Rob Parker. I, I thought they were the odd couple. The odd couple. Right. Oh, they're <laughs> yeah, they've, been, they've been backstage practicing. Have they been rehearsed? A <laughs> little, little shocking to come back and see Rob again. <laughs> but I guess they want to warm me up with an easy opponent. Is that what yeah. it is? Wow. And I'm, I'm good. I appreciate that. It's like preseason. Yeah. 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 They yeah. just spent the last two hours in the same dressing room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how you doing? Hey, hey, hey. Good to see you again, bud. <laughs> I love it. Welcome back, guys. Uh, welcome back, Eric. The Thank Patriots you. are defending champions. They made a lot of changes this offseason. So are they better than last year? 
I think before Edelman got hurt, I, I would have felt that way. Uh, the issue with, with losing him is you, you, those 100 catches inside and, and that security blanket. And I like the fact that they address the outside with Brandon Cooks. I like they, they address the outside defensively. Stephon Gilmore, those things were, were good moves, solid moves. But losing Edelman is a, is a huge issue. And with Gronkowski coming back, that's a huge positive, but he hasn't played a full season since 2011. Mm. I think the other thing defensively is where are they going to get the, the, the quarterback pressures from? They, they, Chris Long left, Jabal Sheard left. They tried to address it, you know, with a, with a couple Coney, of trades. Coney and Ely. Coney Ely, Coney that Moore. didn't work out. And the last thing I'll say is as much as you bring these free agents in, you think they're going to fit into your system, you really don't know until about six or seven weeks into the season how well they, they, they're going to do. Chad Johnson's a great example of that. Everybody had high expectations. It just didn't work in that system. Mm. So are you, I'm saying, are I, you I don't leaning think, toward them having an off year? Well, I, I think it's easier said than done to pr- replace 18 touchdowns by LeGarrette Blunt. I think it's easier said than done to replace Martellus Bennett's production. And now you lose a core guy like Edwin. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think they're going to be as good as they were last year. Really? No. Wow. Well, that's music to his ears, but right? Finally, you've yeah. been away for a while. You got your bearings straight, so you're good now. <laughs> <'Cause> you're <perfect. laughs> are, you, are you disrupted with that answer? No, I'm just, like I, you... I love the answer. Because okay. okay. normally you're a Patriots homer. I get it. And uh, it's your history. <laughs> And, and for today, I think you were honest on it. I think that it's easy to always want to pick the Honest Patriots. as opposed to, to, you know, to, to what? Be dishonest. 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 Yeah. Dishonest. Yeah. You know. I, I, I think that it's a realist. Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah. But, but normally, every year, everybody picks the Patriots. I get it. They play in the AFC least. They got six wins already before the season even starts. I don't know. So, Jay Cutler's in mind. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's six wins right there. Eight. So, Oh, they got eight already, yeah. so all they have to do is win, like, four other games 12. to have 12 wins and get the home field and all that. But I, but I do agree that the Edelman loss is, is big for them. And, and we will get into Tom Brady, but Tom Brady's older. So when you add some of those missing pieces plus an older quarterback and um, a couple of other teams in the AFC who I think are better, I don't think it's automatic. I think that mm. they'll win the AFC least. But I don't see them going back to the Super Bowl. So you still got the Bengals better. No, I don't have the Bengals. Okay. Not this year. I'll Matt, maybe, you're, them. maybe you should be on no, the Bengals. No, I, I was on that train last year. Yeah. I'll, I'll give that well, what, what train are you on this year? Because I want to get off that train. <laughs> I'm on the way. Kansas City train. Oh, oh it's going to be derailed. Is that derailed? <laughs> it's going to be derailed. Mm. I, for me. They won 12 games last they year. They did. They had a good year. And, they, and, really and, good they, and they moved up in the draft to take a quarterback with a 10 pick overall mm-hmm. after winning 12 games. So what did that tell you? They're looking long term. <laughs> exactly. Well, long term, he got twenty million dollars. Alex Smith is due to make twenty point six million. You think he sees that next year? I think he could potentially see that. But not in Kansas. I mean, City. You look at the situation in Green Bay. They held on to Brett Favre. They had Aaron Rodgers. They let the kid develop. Why not? No, but got... Brett, Brett was making twenty point six. But here, for me, Close. I think that Rob Gronkowski will. Pro- this is probably the healthiest he's going to be. Opening day. So since he's coming back, I believe they are a better team because you get Brandon Cooks outside, Philip Dorsett can lift coverage, and now, and I, I get it, uh, Edelman is a security blanket of those 100 catches, probably 30 to 40 on my first down. So now that gives Tom Brady and that offense another crack to get the ball into the end zone. So they're going to miss some of that, but Gronk is Gronk is, is, is the equalizer. They have no answer. Nobody has an answer for him. But is he the same Gronk that we saw a, a year and a half ago, or is he a new Gronk well, or old Gronk? Well, even the, even the banged-up Gronk last year had 25 catches for 540 yards and three touchdowns in eight games. In two of the games, he was limping. He was, he was just out there. So basically in six games, he had almost, you know, over 500 yards. He's healthy to start the season. I believe with the coverage that that uh, Dorsett and Cooks c- can manipulate mm-hmm. because you got to get back. Now, I believe they're going to throw the ball over your head a lot more this year, kind of like they did in 2007, than the nickel and dime stuff. But they still have those backs out of the backfield. Look, they got Tom Brady, and look, I, I, I agree with you on this, Rob. He is getting older, and you never know. You know, like Dana White said, you wake up one morning when you start to get forward in your legs and everything starts to hurt. You never know. You might get in the game, you're like, well, damn, mm. Mm. I'm 40. Mm. Ooh. Oh, so you're, you're predicting this for Tom oh, Brady? Is that what you're predicting? Well, I just want to know. We're doing a just Tom be Brady honest. Coming, coming We're going to do it. Right. We're going to do it. But you're predicting Brady's demise this year. No. You just picked him to be in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh. 
Am I right? You see, he takes one or all no, of us. I'm just of, trying it, to get it straight. Okay, this is what I said. I said he is 40. I said, and when it goes, it goes fast. You never know. Okay. That's what I said. I didn't say it was... We, we both agreed mm -hmm. that Jimmy Garoppolo would be the starting quarterback for the Patriots in 2018. Mm. Is that because of Tom Brady's demise? Mm -mm. No, oh, okay then. I think he'll go win a Super Bowl somewhere else. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you so there was. That. We'll, we'll do that in just a yeah. second. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, in the first year of Undisputed, there was one thing that Rob Parker said on this show even more than he says, no way, no how. And that was, no Gronk, no hardware. Now, I heard it over and over and over again. And I was close no for Gronk, three quarters. No I felt really good about right? that. Yeah. <laughs> so Gronk is gravy, man. I mean, they had no Gronk for the last eight games of the year, and they won it all. And then they went out and they won the offseason. I agree with you about Edelman. It's a big blow, even psychologically, to the 40-year-old quarterback. But they went out and got Brandon Cooks, who's a legit deep threat. Mm -hmm. It's the first legit deep threat since 2007 and Randy Moss. They went out and got Philip Dorsett at the buzzer at the end of the, the preseason. And Philip Dorsett, I'm telling you, He's more of a slot receiver than he's a deep threat. He is not a great deep threat. He doesn't catch deep balls very well, but he can catch it underneath, and it's going to take time because you know and I know it takes time to, to develop that trust from Tom. But when starting game 8, 9, 10, just watch Philip Dorsett out of the slot because he's 4-2-5. Once he catches the five-yard handoff of a pass, yards after catch. He's faster than Edelman. He's not better than Edelman, but he's much faster than Edelman but was. You talk about 9-10, but guess what? He has the injury history. So 12, 13, 14, he might not be playing. Okay, but that's with everybody. That's with Gronk. I mean, how long will Gronk last? How long will Danny Amendola last? I, I don't look, know. I know, what, I know what Gronk is. We still don't know what Philip Dorsett is. We know he can run fast. That's all we know at this juncture of his career. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say it again. Chris Hogan is emerging as a star, like a star. He is really you know, good at what he does. Year? Yeah, well, I think he had a breakout year at the end of last year. You, you disagree, Chris Hogan? I, he, he's I a think bigger any, I think anybody that comes into that system has a chance to have a breakout year yeah. if, they, if they've got that ability. And, and Chris Hogan is – what I love about the way that New England approaches free agency is they usually go get guys that they played against and they have a, that have created problems for them. And that's always been the best that way to it. do it. And you, you know the guys, you know the problems they create for you. So you go get a guy in the division. You not only weaken the division, but you strengthen mm -hmm. your team. And that's what they've done over the last couple of years with, with Buffalo. Yeah, and James White could have been the MVP of the Super Bowl. And he's there. And Deion Lewis is still there. And they added another guy who hurt them before, Gillsley from Buffalo, who's going to give them more pop inside. I know that LeGarrette gave them the load. That, that, that he is at 250 pounds. But Gillisley hits the hole as hard as anybody I see in the NFL. I'm not saying he's the best back in the NFL, but he will hit the hole hard. So you have them 16 and 0? No, I don't. I got him 14 and 2. I, I like the addition of Rex Burkhead as well, yeah. but it still comes down to do how do these pieces fit in place? And you go into the, the first game of the season, and there's one idea that you think you're one – vision of your team and that vision can change pretty dramatically because you don't really know these guys okay. as much as you've had them during the preseason so can they fit how do they fit there's six backs on new england's roster mm -hmm. so all six of them can't play at the same time brandon you somebody will be an actor yeah how, how are they how are they going to fit those guys in week in and week out and you do have to pr or, uh, replace that downhill physical production that legarrette blunt okay. gave you and on defense who rushes the passer? Well, all last year I kept saying, I don't know who rushes the passer, but they got it done. If it takes Hightower off the edge on some weird blitz that they throw up Matt Ryan that changes the whole Super Bowl yep. flow, okay, maybe you got to do that. But when you can go get another guy who hurt you before from Buffalo, Stephon Gilmore, and you keep Malcolm Butler, well, all of a sudden, did you not get better at cornerback? Well, I mean, my, my favorite addition is David, David Harris. Yeah. Okay, well, and you knew him well. I mean, yeah. yeah we drafted him, yeah, and, I know. and he's yeah. he's the right type of guy. Okay. He's the perfect fit. He's, he's, a, he's, he a, three, he's a plug, three, four linebacker. He's smart. He's got leadership. He's got high – he's he's everything. That, to me, was a great pickup. And that me. was your draft choice. Yeah. You got one you, right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one.
<laughs> I guess Reeves, yeah, Revis doesn't count, right? No, oh, no. Okay. Okay. But anyway, okay. I could have drafted Revis. J- really? Just on. on, on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, hey, ten years after the fact, he could have drafted Revis. You could have. But on paper, you have to admit, they look at least as good as last year. Now, how it fits together. But this team is loaded. Yeah, this but you is... don't have a quarterback who's resting the first four games. An old quarterback oh. who got rest. Oh. Well, do, do you think, you look at this team and you think it's loaded? Yeah, I See, do. When I, when I look at the Steelers and look at some of their skill players, that to me is, is a team that ex- has a ton of explosive guys. And then you look at this offensive roster, and they all need to fit together. It needs to work in conjunction. The machine needs to keep going as opposed to, uh, to Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. Okay. Martavis Bryant is back. The, Martavis the, Bryant. The, the I mean, they've defense. got explosive the, players. The Steelers you, defense scared me. Are you picking coach. the Steelers to win the AFC? Well, what I'm saying is when we're talking about explosive, there's what New England has, and then you look at a team like Pittsburgh, and, you know, they've got – Really explosive players. Well, they got two weapons on the outside. I don't know. Damn, how many Antonio you need? Antonio Brown, Martavius Bryant, okay. pretty big Le'Veon weapons. Bell. I mean, those are okay. pretty explosive. I, I got guys. it, but so it, 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 Deion Lewis is pretty electric to me. Oh, he better. Seriously. He Le'Veon, huh? Well, I'm not saying that. And Le'Veon's not Ezekiel either, but still. Oh yeah, he better than Ezekiel. Yeah. I think the Patriots are loaded. I, I think it's going to be hard to keep them from going 16 and 0. I'm going out on the limb to say they're going to lose two. I got them losing at Bucks on a Thursday night and then at your Dolphins in December on a Monday night. They usually lose a game to really? Buffalo, Because well, they, they always year? lose late in the year at, at Miami, going down into the heat. You're saying if the game doesn't matter or if the no, game actually matters? No, I say it matters. matters. It'll definitely matter. What, what happened yeah. two years ago? What's that? We play them tough. Yeah. Stop it. We do. I mean, two years, you wait a minute, two all? years ago they lost a game up? there no, late in the year that sent them to Denver for the AFC Championship. I take my wins when I can get them up. No mercy. The Giants open their season in Dallas on Sunday night. The Cowboys have almost an entirely new secondary from last year. Giants head coach Ben McAdoo was asked about Dallas' secondary and said, quote, if you know who's playing corner for them, you can let me know. Mm. Second time this week, McAdoo has thrown some shade at Dallas. When he was asked about Ezekiel Elliott possibly not playing on Sunday, McAdoo said all backs run the same when there's nowhere to run. Hmm. Hmm. Skip. Hmm. What are you going on here? You, you know what I love about this? What you love? My Dallas Cowboys are about to make Ben McAdoo eat his words just the way they made you eat yours last year, 11 straight weeks, 11 straight victories. And what's going on here is that Here's the truth. I believe that Ben McAdoo is starting to believe his own baloney. <laughs> where after just one year as the head coach of the New York Football Giants, and by the way, they wanted Hugh Jackson first, and then they had to fall back to Ben McAdoo. It don't matter, Skip. But whatever, you know. And after two very narrow, somewhat lucky wins over my Cowboys, he believes he's earned the right to take cheap shots. To, to, to make snarky, smug, condescending comments about the team that actually won the division last that year. That he beat twice. Yeah, I just said that he lucked into two. And no, they no luck. And and he he uh, you know he obviously believes that the Cowboys are overrated. That's what he believes. I think he's just speaking the truth. So do you? Yeah. Okay. So he took a shot earlier this week at Ezekiel Elliott. All backs run the same when there's nowhere to run. So he's basically saying, my defense is so good, which it is very good. You, you think it's just, it's it, man. It's, it's, yeah. it, it's like the mid-70s Steelers, right? No, it, Steel it, curtain, but right? But they, they, they are something uh, on the stick. Something there, yeah. And he, he's saying that defense is so good that it will make Ezekiel Elliott look like Darren McFadden, look like Alfred Morris, look like Rod Smith, look like just another back. Yeah, yeah. And... It, it, last time I checked, you know, Zeke up at New York in the, the second game last year after he started figuring out how to run, mm-hmm. he ran for 107. That was 4.5 a, a crack. That's pretty good. You know, 4.5 a rush, that'll win a lot of football games. So, it's 10 to 7. So 107 and 51 mm. with about 40 carries. I don't think, I, I mean, mm. if you're going to run the ball 40 times for 158. Yeah, but what did you, you were the first to say Monday after opening Sunday, you said, He's got to learn how to be patient and wait to hit the hole until it opens, yeah, right? Okay. So we had 21 carries for 51 yards in the opener, and I kept yelling at my TV, slow down. Yeah. You know, you can't just run through your offensive linemen yeah. before they've even gotten onto their so, blocks. So you're so you saying, so 
21 for 51 mm -hmm. and 24 for 107. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's uh, 45. That's uh, 158. Mm -hmm. Carried it. There. Skip, that's not really good. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so speaking of not very good, the New York Giants last year were 29th in rushing. That's with the ingenious play calling of one Ben McAdoo, who's got that Cheesecake Factory menu. He's just looking through it. Got another play. Got another play. So now they got Paul Perkins and Shane Breen and Darkwa and Wayne Gallman, who I like some. But that's it? That's all you got? So what, do you have Barry Sanders back there or Emmett Smith? I don't see a Barry Sanders or Emmett oh, Smith. Oh, y'all got to But I, I do see, I do see an Eli Manning, the most overrated quarterback in football. He does have two Super Bowl wins over Tom Brady. I don't know how that happened. And what else does he have to show? Hmm. He led the league in interceptions three times. And last year he tied for fourth in interceptions with Blake Bortles and Brock Osweiler? Are you kidding me? Thanks to the ingenious play calling of one Ben Much Ado about nothing. So it brings me back to the cornerbacks. I can help here. I can tell Ben who my cornerbacks are. There's this guy named Orlando Scandrick. Two years ago, he was the best player on the defense. Well, it's actually now three years, if we go back three years. He was the yeah. best player. Torp is ACL, struggled a little bit last year. He looked great in the preseason. He looked like Dare I say, a star, Orlando Scandrick. And by the way, Nolan Carroll, all he did was start 54 games for the Eagles, and now he's a Cowboy. Well, that's pretty good. And he's... got toasted on 52 oh, of those games. Oh, okay. Well, wow. Uh, why I'll, take that. Why, I'll take that. And why isn't he suspended? Didn't I, he get a DUI? He did, but he's fine. He's eligible to play. I'm just so trying to figure out. Wilson, I don't know how, but he's, he's eligible. I mean, well, I mean, what's going on, Skip? Okay, and then another cornerback. I'm going to help Ben out here. There's this kid, fourth-round pick out of Purdue last year named Anthony Brown, who started nine games late in the year, just took over at the cornerback position, and he was quietly terrific at cornerback. I, I think I'm pretty strong at cornerback this year. Didn't Green Bay cook Anthony Brown? Uh-uh. Uh -huh. No, I didn't see that. I saw Jeff Heath intercept the great Aaron Rodgers I mean, twice. He had three, got canceled, well, he but. cooked somebody because he had 384 oh. passing yards. Oh, okay. So he did something. Yeah, well, he was lucky. Mason well, first Crossbar of all, saved him. Don't worry about it. Huh? Don't worry about it. How can you be up 21 to 3 if you're the greatest thrower of the football ever? And then all of a sudden it's 28 all and 31 all against an overrated flash in the pan quarterback named Dak Prescott. I don't know. And then it was 34 31 and all y'all went oh. home. Oh. Okay. All, since you got all. Yeah. And first of all, I got no problem with what Ben McAdoo said. Yeah. And now I know why that play sheet is so big. Yeah. Because he got like 10 jokes at the bottom of a joke. Does he? Hey, yeah. tell me who hey, oh, so tell me who the DBs <laughs> are so we'll both know. So he wants to play the comedy yeah. club in Manhattan on yeah. Thursday nights. Yeah. Right? Okay. Said, he, he didn't say both. Mm. He said both. B O F. Oh, did he? Yeah, that's what he said. Mm -hmm. Hey, tell me the DB so we both know. Mm -hmm. And then he hit y'all, yeah. I ain't worried about who running back. Because mm -hmm. all love them run the same mm -hmm. when it ain't nowhere all to the run. Same. Oh. Yeah. You love that, huh? I love it. Both quotes up on the Cowboy Bulletin Board as we speak. Good. Good. Because guess love what? Love it. It doesn't matter whether yep. you say a little or you say a lot. Yeah. Skip, I'm going to tell you, in, two, in 2001, my last year with the Ravens, Player, I was playing defense. The player walk up to me and tell me, man, I don't like y'all coach. He talked too much. Well, we beating the brakes off him. Mm. I said, well, hey, your coach don't talk enough because y'all terrible. Don't worry about what we do over here. Mm. Don't you worry about Ben McAdoo. Mm. You worry about Jason Garrett and them glasses, the sunglasses he going to be on because the sun going to be real bright. Mm. Eli going to be cooking. Mm. Woo! Oh, they're going to be cooking. Mm. Oh, they're going to hit that thrill on them. You already know where they're going to get in the end zone and hit Wait. that Michael Jackson. I, I don't know if he's going to be doing a lot of moves because he's got a high ankle sprain. And <laughs> he I, got I don't ankle. know. And now I'm starting to hear he might not be available on Sunday. No, what happens is he needs to put that ankle on Anthony Brown's chair oh. and watch it heal. Oh, really? Go! Oh, he's what, you, did you see that catch he made on Jack Rabbit? Who? Odell. Oh. The one we showed, we went over the top. That was on Barry Church. No, that was, no, no, no. I'm talking about in practice. Oh. When he went over the top one hand. Oh, oh you already. Oh, you mean that? Oh, Ooh, I see. You, that, yeah, that. Yeah. That. Oh, it, is it? Wait, are they going to play Globetrotter basketball on Sunday? He night, just or? make it look like that. Oh. He okay. just make it look like that because he don't oh. know. Who, he don't even know who the cornerback is. Do you get are. points for your pregame no. presentation? All, oh. ben, this is what ben, you know. Why Ben McAdoo is talking so much? Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm two and zero. Oh. Hmm. I don't know what they – I don't know, and I don't care what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. But this is what I know. My record against them as head coach of the New York football Giants, mm -hmm. gee, me, yeah. I'm two 
they got zero. That is correct. And guess what? Guess At what? the opening day, it'll be three Two and one. zero. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can't wait until late in the game because we know Orlando Skandrick. We've had him sitting right yep. here at this desk. He's his own man. Yeah. He will speak his mind. Yeah. And I can't wait until he trots over to the New York sideline late in the game on Sunday night when it's in hand, and he says, I'm Orlando Scandrick to Ben McAdoo. That's what he's going to say. I'm Orlando Scandrick. You know what That's gonna, what he's going to say. You know, Watch. You know what he's going to do? Yeah. Late in the ball game? Good game, guys. Yeah. We'll see y'all next time. Yeah. That's what he's going to say. Because mm. Brandon Marshall going to go hit him up. Mm. Oh, you already know. Skip, you, why you keep playing with Odell? Y'all need to put some spec on this man's name. Mm. Now, they need to go ahead and break bread with him and... So he'll mind will be free because you want Odell mind. I feel free. sorry for him. He's got a bad ankle. It ain't nothing wrong with his ankle. Oh, really? Yeah, he finna break, break it off in somebody's butt. Really? And heal it right on up. Okay. You better be careful. Yeah, I'm gonna be careful when I get this yeah. do up out of you too. Okay. Three and oh, Ben McAdoo. Ben McAdoo got that big old sheet. He said, let me go to mm -hmm. joke number five. <laughs> if you know who the Cowboys corners are, can you tell is it Dion? <laughs> Is it Larry Brown? Mm -hmm. He's got a little notepad. Hold on. Yep. It might be Eric. Is it Everson Walls? That's a good mm. one. Oh, yeah, mm. What about clean scale? Mm. Dennis Thurman? You, you threw Dexter clean scale. I like that. Charlie Waters. Yeah. Renfro. Benny Barnes. Ah, oh, man. Yeah. Hey, Ben back in the I don't know who they are. Ben, I, I don't even know who, who they are. Yeah. I just know this. Mm. They're going to get dealt with just like that old line. Mm -hmm. Y'all old line going to mm. get dealt with, too. Oh, that's a stretch. We got the best. Now, you know what I know to skip about you? You love the old line when it's good to your family. We got the three best old linemen in the game, and they're just going to be blowing people off the ball. You know what? I got nothing more to say because I don't need to say anything. I'm going to let my Snack. team speak. Snack says, I ain't mm -hmm. going nowhere. Yeah, we'll see Is JPP that. healthy? Mm -hmm. Olivier Burner? We'll see you on Sunday. <laughs> no mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us tomorrow morning at the same time, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Facts, sports, one of one.